We still all run into, run into burning buildings when people are running out of them. That, uh, we may have a We've watched it happen for years here in the QCA. Tonight, you just watched the premiere of Chicago Fire. It was chock full of drama, but just how realistic is it? Local firefighters say they see their share, but tell us fire service is so much more. In Davenport, it's a team, 145 strong, dedicated to serving the community. And over the next few weeks, KWQC's Elizabeth Goodson will introduce us to some of the men and women who make up that department and show us what it takes to be part of Davenport Fire. Oscar Meyer is one of the largest fires I've been to and by far the darkest and scariest fire. Every firefighter has the big one, the one where every detail about the call, the fire, the people is burned into his or her brain. We had one fellow that uh, just about didn't make it out of the building and two other firefighters pulled him out. And, yeah, we led 35 people out of that building that day. But that day, it's not a typical day in the life of a Davenport firefighter. That starts before the sun with maintenance and information exchange and hours of training. When our doors are down, we are still working for the betterment of this community and for you. Crews making sure they are ready to respond to any emergency. <laughs> From a hazardous materials leak to dealing with weapons of mass destruction to medical emergencies. You have to work together. It's teamwork. Some of that comes through on the small screen. When you fight fires together, you become a family. But life in the heat of it on the streets of Davenport is very different from on television. While this is a family. It's, it's being part of a group, a team that works together. We live together, we eat together, and you get to enjoy that and get to know a really good group of people. It's a group that signed up for a tough, unpredictable job. It's in the rain, it's in the sun, it's in the temperature extremes. It's three in the morning. Yeah, I mean, you really have to have that desire to be doing that type of thing 24-7 to, to make it a, a career. Most we talk to say it's a calling, inspired by family members who have gone before. You know, I grew up in it. My dad was a volunteer here from the time I was about six years old. Or drawn to it because they want to serve the community. Growing up, you always see the big red trucks go by and you don't really understand why they're going by. And you, as you get older, you start to understand that anytime someone call, calls 911, they're coming to help you. And at the same time, it's not always about response. These firefighters spend a lot of time out in the community focusing on prevention and education. And we'll tag along as they do that in the coming weeks, bringing you a behind-the-scenes look at all aspects of Davenport Fire. What child hasn't flirted with the idea of being a firefighter? Of course, it looks dangerous and dramatic, but there is much more to the job than what you see in movies or on TV. Yeah, tonight we begin our special series showing a day in the life of a Davenport firefighter, what it's really like. KWQC's Elizabeth Goodson takes us beyond the blaze with Quantity Fire. By the time the sun comes up over Davenport, the city's firefighters are already hard at work. For them, the time clock starts ticking at 6.45. And it won't stop for 24 hours. And I hear a, a car accident come in, a house fire, a tanker roll over. It doesn't matter. I, I, I can respond to those and, and assist in any way. First, there is an information exchange. The soon-to-be off-duty crew filling the next shift in on what happened overnight. Then the day's work begins. A checklist of chores inside and out. From washing cars to testing equipment like radios, rope, and the rescue sled to readying rigs. Um, I'm driving this truck. I want to make sure everything's ready to go in case we have to go out the door right now. But if they don't... You need to raise, rotate, and then extend. There is a drill every morning before breakfast. We need to be able to pull up on the scene and be able to do this at 3 o'clock in the morning. So if, just like anything, tool, if you don't use it, you're not going to be proficient at it. Proficiency, something crews work at. Spending much of each day training for any and every emergency. If the cops can't take care of it and public works can't take care of it, I, I mean, they're going to call the fire department. Firefighters will always respond, but at the same time, they are just as focused on being proactive. Remember, don't stand up and walk through the smoke. 
get down as low as you can. Talking safety and prevention and making community connections. <laughs> no, no, she didn't. These firefighters are rock stars at Monroe Elementary School here about once a week. So what's, what's new at school? As part of the Lunch Buddy program with Big Brothers Big Sisters. Spending some one-on-one -on -one time with their littles and their classmates. The only time people usually see us is if we're going to a call, maybe something pretty bad. So to see something that's just a positive, fun thing to do and we can be uh, an influence on kids, that's always a positive. 145 men and women in Davenport all here for different reasons. My dad was a volunteer fireman. I had pictures of me when I was about four or five years old. I had all the fire equipment on. I went into the Coast Guard and and I uh, went to a firefighting school and, and found out I really, really love this. But all with the same kind of heart underneath all the gear. I think we're all very similar that we like helping people. It's a huge adrenaline rush. And that may be why there is a long-running, friendly rivalry between the engine crews who man the hoses and the truckies who ventilate buildings and handle rescues. There are first firefighters. Who had a fire does the most work. But make no mistake, this is also a family. It's, it's being part of a group, a team that works together. We live together, we eat together, and you get to enjoy that and get to know a really good group of people. We saw that firsthand across the city where each firehouse is a home. Crews at Station 7 decorating for fall. They take pride at Station 6 putting up Christmas lights. And inside at Central Fire, a bulletin board like the one you may have in your kitchen, filled with pictures, thank you notes from the community, even the fireman's prayer. And there are a lot of firefighters that have given their lives in service to their community. Two in Davenport, the last one in 1967. <laughs> Today, firefighters here respond to almost 15,000 calls each year. About 80% of them medical emergencies, many times happening right as crews sit down to a meal. We saw it minutes into dinner on a Thursday night, crews responding to help a person who had fallen on scene and administering aid before medic arrived to transport. And again, moments after they sit back down, these firefighters are up again, running to their rigs even as the dispatcher continues to send the call. From the first tone, it takes them just two minutes and 20 seconds to get to the front door to start providing care to the patient. So you're out and you eat a cold supper and you don't get any sleep. But at the same time, I would not want to do anything else. I love this job. Hundreds apply to do it, 445 this year. Back in 2010, of 480 who took the written, oral, and physical test. It definitely wears on your body from head to toe. Just five are now wearing the uniform. We don't think of it as a job. It is a lifelong career that you dedicate yourself to from the beginning to the end. And with the great benefits that we have, that means people are going to stay here 25, 30, 35 years. Because at the end of each shift, firefighters tell us they are already looking forward to the next one. You no, know, I can honestly say in 17 years that there hasn't been a day that I haven't wanted to say, well, you know what, I don't really feel like coming into work yet. I haven't had one of those days yet. We'll take a closer look at how crews spend their days, the specific activities from training to prevention to investigations. We'll also look at some of the history and traditions of the department. Wednesday nights at 10 for the next three weeks. Well, we all know how dangerous the job can be. In fact, tomorrow, Chicago firefighters are burying one of their own, killed fighting a house fire. Handling life or death situations is something crews train for. KWQC's Eric, or Elizabeth Goodsit shows us in tonight's special report, Quad Cities Fire. I've been on boats on the fire department. I've been on fire trucks. You just never know what you're going to be called to do the next day. From rescues to medical emergencies to September's fiery crash no. at the Quad City Air Show. Oh, no. Every year there's a few calls that you just didn't expect. That's why crews train for every scenario you could imagine, including those you'd imagine would be familiar. We'll find a victim in the bedroom that you go to. I want you to exit and do it all over in the next bedroom. Okay. This day. Fire on the second floor with occupant trap. Practicing venting a burning house getting to the person inside as quickly as possible, which can mean from an outside second story window. 
Davenport firefighters responded to nearly 400 fires last year, and while there can be similarities, they tell us each one is different. If we do it over and over, what, what the idea is is that it comes second nature. So when you're faced with these real situations, uh, you don't have to really think about it as much. We saw it back in May when two hikers got stuck in one of the Maquoketa caves. And this was nothing that I've ever experienced before with the 90 degree angles, um, tunnels, having to crawl. Crews spent hours squeezing through spaces the size of a car tire, hundreds of feet below ground, barely able to take a deep breath without scraping the cave wall. It definitely is a once in a career type thing. But something firefighters prepare for with high angle rescue training high above the ground and can find space training to make sure crews will be safe underneath it. Good? Good stuff? A third of the department certified to go into the West Side Diversion Tunnel to bring out a potentially injured worker or rescue one overcome by toxic gas or flood water. Because of where we live, water is a main focus of Davenport firefighters and their training. The department has three rescue boats at the ready. We have flood, flood waters. Uh, We'll have it out in the water every day almost. Policing the waterways, responding to calls about hot water heaters that don't work or a smell of natural gas, and checking conditions. Beautiful day today. Crews do that year round, especially important after a summer like this one with extremely low water levels. We've had quite a few situations where people hit hidden hazards in the water, be it boulders, wing dams, trees and then it disables their boat. Firefighters will respond to that kind of call as well as medical emergencies on the water, boats on fire, or sometimes in the case of floods, homes on fire that can only be reached by boat. Firefighters say their work can be what they call low frequency, high risk. If there's an emergency, that uh, where they don't know who to call, they call the fire department. These men and women trained to take care of situations involving things most of us don't want to think about, much less hear about in our community. Nuclear weapons, anthrax, the plague. What's the skin doing, Woodsy? It was bright red and dry. He's got some cyanide issues going on then. While this has not happened here, the department's hazmat team is called on on a regular basis for chemical spills and leaks, called out more than a dozen times last year alone. The last big response in the West End back in 2005. We had an actual orange vapor cloud going across Rockingham Road. That day donning level A type suits. Basically in a shrink wrap bag with your self-contained breathing apparatus on inside of there. Controlling the situation, why they train continuously tough, to detect and contain chemical leaks and understand what kind of reaction can happen if they can't. Everything they have done we learn and grow from that helps make us better at what we do and safer at what we do. Our series continues in the coming weeks looking at fire prevention, investigations and the plan for the department's future, including a new central fire station. We see them rush into burning buildings on a regular basis. Davenport firefighters say that's a big part of the job, but so is preventing those fires in the first place. How crews work with the community to do just that. As KWQC's Elizabeth Goodson takes us beyond the blaze with Quad Cities Fire. It looked like a storm cloud was blowing in. There is the big one. Oh, I was at the cat plant. It was the Oscar Meyer fire back in about 1997. And the first one. It was a dryer fire in the basement. But firefighters say the majority of calls they respond to are preventable. Why they work to get the life safety message out with education. Really, sometimes we say that we're trying to put ourselves out of business. Talking to seniors about falls. And the retainer clip should be right at the armpit level. Keeping kids safe in car seats and showing teens <laughs> What can happen if they drink and drive? It can burn your skin if you get it in your eyes. Crews use the fire safety house to give a first-hand look at dangers every family faces at home and teach the best way to respond to emergencies. Go ahead and go out the window. Every fall they are in the schools. I know that sounds funny, but one thing you don't want to do is be afraid of us because we're here to come get you, all right? Yeah. Every year they conduct inspections, 4,800 of them, special events like the Mississippi Valley Fair, Bix Fest, and haunted houses, as well as apartments and businesses across the city. What's through that door? Even our television station. We can find things and bring it to your attention or bring it to um, businesses' attention uh, before it actually becomes a problem for them. And he says that can make a response faster and easier. In case we have to come here at 2 o'clock in the morning, 
uh, we know our way around. It starts with knowing exactly where each building is, making sure the address is clearly visible outside. Nothing back here. Really? And inside, crews check to make sure fire extinguishers are good to go. There aren't overloaded extension cords lying around and that combustibles are stored properly. They also make sure emergency exits are clear. Yeah, so that, that tree's got to come down. Something that was not the case in our case. Something these firefighters fixed on the spot. And they tell us a big part of prevention is investigation. As they train to put out fires, they also train to learn what starts them. If we can determine the, determine the cause and origin of a fire, we can prevent those circumstances in the future and possibly prevent more fires. 30 Davenport firefighters are certified to find the cause and origin of a blaze. Look at all this. How in the world are you going to determine what caused this fire with all this damage that's done here? It may look like you're looking for a needle in a haystack. But actually what we do is we narrow that down. Looking for clues in charred woodwork or soot on walls. You'll see fire burns up and out and it leaves V patterns. Sometimes leading to a bad outlet, a burning cigarette, or a deliberately set fire. People will actually start fires for different reasons, you know, for insurance fraud or revenge or spite, those type of things. Nine firefighters investigate dozens of arsons in Davenport each year. Fire cops are graduates of the police academy, able to carry guns, issue subpoenas, and make arrests. Many times doing that with the help of Selma, sniffing out accelerants. Seek, seek care, seek care. Good girl. The only ATF trained dog in the state of Iowa, the only one in the QCA. Generally, we walk away there most of the time sure of ourselves whether or not it's a set fire. Firefighters tell us it's not just about working with each other, they also work with police officers trained in fire investigation as well. Together with the Scott County Attorney, they have one of the highest fight crime fighting conviction rates in the state of Iowa related to fires. Next week, we wrap up our special series, taking a look at the traditions within the department, how crews hold on to those as they move forward. Well, did you see the smoke and flames out near Interstate 80 yesterday? It was part of a controlled burn. Davenport firefighters bringing down a house they had been using for training, learning about how fast flames travel in different kinds of construction and how fire can behave. This is a rare opportunity for them to spend what they call quality time inside a house fire. Most times crews are working to save lives and protect property. We know that they run into burning buildings when others rush out. But how they do it has changed over the years, and so has the job description. As we wrap up our special series, Quad Cities Fire, KWQC's Elizabeth Kutza takes a look back, even as she shows us how the fire service is moving forward. Used to be called smoke eaters, now is almost a badge of courage. Davenport's bravest still rush toward danger, but while many aspects of firefighting have changed in the past 100 plus years, some traditions still hold strong. The traditions define, you know, who we are. Like this alarm box on display at the city's fire museum. Well, they didn't have the telephones at that time. They could go and pull the alarm box and that would send a signal to the fire department. One still hangs on the wall at Central Fire. Next to the bell, it would trigger. Now, crews listen for computer-generated tones. The guy's ears are actually tuned that when they hear their station's tone, they know it's going to be them even before any words are spoken. And when it is them, more often than not, <laughs> firefighters at two stations still come down poles. And a central fire, they climb up the hose tower. It's what you'd expect, historically a place to dry old cotton hoses. We actually had to hang dry it so that it didn't mildew and rot. But it's also the place a new firefighter will start to make his or her mark in the department and the city. It's been a tradition for as long as I can recall. Literally carving a name and date into these bricks. Here, straight up where it says Terrell 92, that just basically means that I came on in 1992 and that's the year that I etched it in there. The names date back to the 40s. The bricks here hold a written record of the station's history. When the first snow fell in 1955, how much union dues were in 57, and how many applicants survived the physical agility test in 2002. Everything they have done we learn and grow from. Over the years, firefighters have seen a new kind of gear. When I come on in 1974, we still wore the rubber coats and they were heavy and they were hot technology. So we're still able to see 
the outline. A new focus. Safety now is the number one concern. And an expanded direction. 25 years ago, when I came on, we'd have a working fire every other day. 25 years later, we have a working fire, it seems like, once every two weeks. I advice, it smells like hot wire melting. In part, crews say because of increased education, telling us now they handle an increasing number of medical emergencies thanks to uninsured and underinsured residents. We're, we're essentially the, the community safety net. Every time dispatch sends medic on a call, oh, no. a fire truck goes too. We're fortunate enough to have seven different stations around the city so we can get there a little bit quicker. 82 EMTs, 55 paramedics, able to provide the level of care you typically see in an emergency room on scene using cutting edge technology. We can put on the Lucas device that takes over CPR for us. Changing outcomes for the better. The saves are adding up, 11 on engine six so far. That's pretty cool, yeah. And crews are working to add to the total, adding to their arsenal of tools to help them handle anything with education and equipment. And they plan to improve infrastructure as well. Central Fire, built in 1901, grew up with the community around it. Now showing its age, city leaders want to refurbish the firehouse and make it more community friendly. This station is a gorgeous building. It is truly the, the iconic image of what Davenport Fire is. The chief says while it will be renovated, it's not going anywhere. And neither are the firefighters who call this department home. Obviously, if, if you ever need us, we're always Gonna be there. And while the job description has expanded, it always starts with fighting fires. There are other people who can handle medical calls or gas leaks, but firefighters are the only ones trained and willing to do battle with something like this. And in case you're wondering, renovation for Central Fire is still in the planning stage, but we are told the final plans will include saving those bricks somehow. Gary?